Anas Aremeyao Anas, one of the most high-profile and controversial African journalists. An undercover specialist, he never shows his face. For two years, he's been unlocking the secrets of African football. The tension is so high, it's football and it's Ghana, and the people have cried for far too long. Almost 100 match officials captured on camera, taking money when they shouldn't. One of them, a referee, meant to be running the line at the World Cup in Russia. Another, a FIFA executive, who is one of the most powerful figures in African football. With the World Cup just days away, this is the inside story of Anas's most explosive and controversial investigation to date. This is what football feels like in Ghana. Passion, fun, and love of the beautiful game. This is the El Clasico of Ghana. Asante Kotoko versus Hearts of Oak, with Hearts just snatching a famous victory against their bitter rivals. Without doubt, football is the most popular sport in Ghana. We say of football as a passion of the nation. It is part of the country. It's a culture, it's a tradition. But for these players and the fans that adore them, their world is about to turn upside down. An undercover team has spent almost two years laying the sports secrets bare. This investigation is seeks to look at football. When this story comes, there's going to be a lot of trouble. The entire football systems would all collapse. The key targets were the men in the middle, referees and assistant referees, with the power to change the course of matches. Getting ready for the crucial match. Match the 8th Ghana Premier League right here live. Tensions are very high. Kumasi and Kotoko and Agra to full game. Kotoko and Hearts of Oak are the two biggest clubs in Ghana and in African football circles. And so meeting between the two sides is obviously the biggest game in Ghanaian football calendar. Face to face. Hearts of Oak still want to be main champions. We are 100% better, better than, than Kotoko. Fabulous! Fabulous! House of Folk is not a club, it's a religion. Playing against Hearts of Folk, we dare not lose. We are the Porcupine Warriors. This was one of the first matches we worked on. They have seen the clashes with Master Santa Kotoko. For the undercover action, we have to rewind to the morning of this game. Anas wanted to see if referees and their assistants would take money. The match officials were staying at the King David Hotel in Accra. The first time they paid the officials, there was a camera fault. So they returned the following day with another bundle of banknotes in the Ghanaian currency CDs. Kojo, not his real name, carried the cash and filmed undercover. We decided to go back and give them 500 CDs top-up money, and we told them it was a gift from the supporters of Hearts of Oak. FIFA rules are very clear. No accepting gifts or any behaviour that will give rise to suspicion. The Ghanaian FA rules are just as clear. No cash under any circumstances. The undercover team found assistant referee Salifu Rahman still in his vest and explained they were giving more money from the supporters. 
Il est supporter. Je me suis mon mari va être le supporter. Je me suis le supporter. Je me suis Rahman took the 500 CDs, which are around five to the dollar, and explained how he and the referee could help. The reporters then go in search of the referee, Samuel Suka, but they unexpectedly bump into someone else. The match commissioner, Mike A. Okoto, an official who's supposed to stop this kind of thing happening an official who should throw them out. But instead, the match commissioner takes the money. This one for the By saying the money is for TNT, transport and travel, the undercover team creates a convenient but unethical excuse for handing over the cash. Mr. Okoto later admitted to the BBC that he had taken the money but considered it was for TNT expenses, adding the cash had not influenced the way he did his job. The hotel room of match referee Samuel Suka was the next call. <laughs> Suka appears distracted by his phone, but eventually takes the money. In the closing minutes of the match, referee Suka awards a penalty for handball to Hearts. And again, it's a penalty. Ahmed Adams, Samuel Suka. It's a club penalty. And I'm telling you, Suka should go to heaven for awarding House of Folk this penalty. It's a club penalty. Well, the argument will be, was it a penalty or otherwise? No, I don't think it was a penalty. It's, it's not a penalty. Even the commentator said commented about that. I One nil to hearts. It, it was such a controversial victory. Ghana's FA were called in. Samuel Suka was suspended. The match review committee studied the footage and decided the penalty was good. And he scores! Hats of folk in the lead here. Brilliant penalty taken there by Vincent Atenga. The time the goal came was very crucial. Uh, disappointed indeed. Two months after the match, Anas's team came across Samuel Suka again. His suspension was over and he was working at another game. Suka was complaining because he thought Hearts should have supported him during his suspension. Anas's team handed over some extra cash, but he still wasn't happy. Outside, Suka continued complaining. It's not possible to prove that cash did influence this match or any other match in this film. But then Suka appeared to claim that he might have given the penalty unfairly. We found our feet and the investigation started going. We started peeling from one layer to the other and thinking, how bigger? Can this investigation go?
The man behind this controversial investigation is a Ghanaian undercover specialist who has become one of the most famous journalists in Africa. His work has attracted some powerful supporters in the past. We see that spirit in courageous journalists like Anas, who risked his life to report the truth. Anas has provided that spark for people to wake up. But he has outspoken critics too. Some believe his methods are excessive, even dangerous. He has set out to damage people's interests, damage people's image, not in accordance with the law. Anas made his name with large-scale undercover exposés. In 2015, he controversially revealed that a bunch of Ghanaian judges had taken money. We got 34 judges. It was an exciting moment. It came with threats to my life. It came with a lot of legal suits. It was a very big story and made international headlines. But this one is bigger. Anas views football in Africa as a uniting force, but he also knows firsthand how easily things can go wrong. I'm normally not a football person. I don't like football, but one time I have this friend who is a stand supporter of House of Folk, and he called me that there has been some chaotic scenes within the stadium. It was the 2001 match at Accra Sports Stadium between Hearts and Kotoko. Violence erupted after the game and panicked supporters were crushed to death after police fired tear gas and rubber bullets into the crowd. 127 people died. The stadium's deadly shortcomings were damned in a report. Anas says he was sent to a hospital morgue to find the body of a friend. And what he saw there would mark him for life. It was a very sad spectacle when I was walking through the dead bodies. Their crime was very simple. They loved their teams. They went to the stadium to watch a match, only to end up being in a morgue. Ghanaians see football as, as our pride having produced some of the best footballers even in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Sadiq Adams is one of Ghana's leading sports journalists and an authority on the Ghanaian game. Ghana had to go and win the African Cup of Nations four times. No other country had done that. But in recent years, the game has seen widespread allegations of corruption, a lot of scandals. We do not see facilities. We do not see grassroots development. We do not see clubs progressing. Where is the money in football? A football insider told Anas that there was plenty of money in the sport, but it was going to the wrong people. Anas believed that to investigate, he would have to test the system himself. For him, it's familiar territory, but it's territory for which he has been heavily criticized. Charles Bentham is a leading lawyer in Accra. You're having an ordinary conversation with a friend or some acquaintance. What actually happens is that you are being entrapped into something that you have least idea about. And I think that it really, really, really hurts people and disturbs them. The ethics are clear how a referee is supposed to behave. So if you are seen tilting the scale of justice in favor of one team, it's wholly unacceptable, let alone stretching your arm to collect money. On the ground, Anas's source inside football slowly introduced undercover specialist Kojo to the world of premiership matches. Secret filming kicked off on the opening day of the 2017 season. The undercover team offering cash to match officials on a weekly basis. Referees get the equivalent of around $170 a game, so Anas decided his team would offer the same or a bit more, all of it strictly against football rules. Red Nut Light Bridge getting us ready for today's game here at the Brussels and Clay Sports Stadium. Wherever you find yourself in Ghana, welcome. It's the Web MTNFA Cup competition. <laughs> Um, the FA Cup is the second most prestigious trophy in Ghana. 
And once you win it automatically, you qualify for the African Confederations Cup. The referee for this match was Reginald Lathbridge, one of the most qualified refs in the country and a FIFA official. You expect that once somebody gets to the FIFA level, the person has attained the height that he becomes impossible to influence. The night before the big game, Anasa's undercover team met up at Lathbridge and his officials in their hotel. When we got to the hotel, it's actually quite a big hotel. I had never been there before, so I was worried. There was a lot of hide and seek. Anasa's team say they want Hearts of Oak to win and tell the officials they will be carrying cash. One of the assistant referees wasn't at the hotel, so the reporters met him in an alley near the stadium the following morning. All four officials would be paid. He was in a real hurry. He just wanted us to pay him and go. Kennedy Bentil accepted the 800 CDs on offer. <laughs> Hearts beat Wa All Stars 2 1. And the Wa fans weren't happy. Ghana is a football nation, but how is our referees doing? Significantly very poor. For Wa All Stars to be kicked away in this manner is very painful. Some refs did well out of the investigation. 20 of them took money on more than one occasion and Lathbridge was one of them. Here he is accepting money before another game. <laughs> By the end of his investigation, Anas's team say they made payments to a total of 78 Ghanaian match officials. This raises serious questions about the entire outcome of the country's Premier League season. But there were deeper, darker secrets about African football to come. Four weeks ago, Anas started a campaign to publicize the launch of his revelations. Mysterious billboards went up around the cities, teasing the public that a scoop was on the way. Anas says publicity isn't enough. He intends to push through a series of court cases challenging the football authorities. Today, he's briefing his lawyers. Now, over the past two years, we've been able to film across the length and breadth of the nation. I want to annul last year's Premier League. The evidence is so clear. By the time you go through the evidence, you'll see that we have so many of them. What you just told us is, uh, is mind-boggling and it hits one. <laughs> Wow. This is wow. It makes the judges' expose look rather infantile compared to the damning revelations contained in the footages I've just seen. And not gauging out the future of this country, causing pain to the masses and feel as if it is the norm. In the world of football, life was going on as usual. Inusa Musa, Heart of Oak club captain, is aware of rumours around corruption in the game. I think about the issues, about the, uh, the left free taking money, I think it's no good. I think it's no good because I've been working every day to get results. If it is true, they have been taking money, they have to stop. This week, Anas is showing his own film about soccer secrets in screenings in Ghana's big cities. When news about it broke three weeks ago, talk shows and social media lit up, positive and negative. We got him. I think he's getting there. Anas gave a trailer. 
Then is new, say, ah. He has given us a hint and a clue, say. Man, I need to Anything on this security, say, Anasa. 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 All right. Sixth and seventh of June. Oh, yeah. How is it possible, sir? You know why? Why the tension is so high? It's football and it's Ghana, and the people have cried for far too long. Oh yeah, Arabia. Recently, you go to the stadiums and they are empty. They are half empty because of the corruption that people see and the perception about corruption with our game. I'm getting calls from politicians, I'm getting calls from the football fraternity, I'm getting calls from security and government agencies in charge of corruption. And that's what normally happens. I mean, the pressure is mounting every single minute. With so many Ghanaian match officials taking payments, Anas turned his sights to those in charge of them. In dealing with referees, you needed to look at the body that is responsible for this group of people. The Referees Committee selects which officials take charge of League and Cup games. Anas's team focused on a key committee member, Charles Douna. They told him they were from the Accra side, Hearts of Oak. We wanted him and his other colleagues to always give us referees that would favour our team to win. Then Dona is on the phone. At the other end of the line, a colleague on the referees committee. Dona sets up a meeting with him for Anas's undercover men. Dona proved to be a reliable fixer for Anas's team. A week later, he followed up the phone call, introducing the reporters to two members of the referees committee. Uma Teni and Harry Atotunu, also known as Togbe. They get together at another petrol station and then head down an alleyway to talk business. Then the cash comes out. Teni takes his, but Togbe doesn't want to handle it. It's again a demonstration of the total breakdown of the system. That one person takes money and invites his other members of the committee to also come and take this. Mr. Tenney later told the BBC our interpretation of events was misleading and he had done nothing wrong. Anas moved on to an even more influential figure, Joseph Wellington one of the top figures in West African football. He's FIFA's referees instructor for the whole of West Africa, responsible for the training of referees in 16 countries. Clearly, referee Wellington is a big fish. They are vigilant and they have everything at stake. Anas says Wellington wanted to send a middleman, but the undercover team insisted on a face-to-face -face meeting. They say they told him they were representing the Heart of Oak Club and wanted his help getting the right referees for their matches. At first, Wellington would only allow one man to approach him since they knew each other. But the cameraman, Kojo, was carrying the cash. Eventually, he was waved over. No problem, no problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It was just mind-boggling. Now I started to realize that, look, 
this particular thing was endemic it had spread everywhere in fact i believe that no match played in this country was fair and now i started thinking that look let me search elsewhere let me look at the african continent and see who else is doing what What that meant for Anas was taking his investigation beyond the Ghanaian leagues and into the Champions League, a tournament for Africa's top clubs. The African Champions League is the elite competition for clubs on the continent. You win your national league and you play in the CAF Champions League. Huge prize money in recent years. Would the international referees who officiated these matches fall foul of Anas's methods? Derni Dembele from the Ivory Coast is one of the top referees in Africa. He came to Ghana in March to referee the Champions League game between Ghana's Aduana Stars and the Algerian team ES Setif. The night before the match, the reporters arranged to meet Dembele at his hotel, posing as supporters of the home team. We knew that in order to get this referees to do our bidding, we needed to pay higher, and we needed to pay in dollars. All officials at a Champions League game can earn $1,100 a match. Okay, so uh, we have some problems here for you, and after the match, if you come back, we will thank you, you understand. So if you help us, and we are able to make it come, it will be fine. Dembele listened for a while and accepted the cash and placed it on the table. This person is just to welcome us. Okay. Welcome to our country. Okay. We are together. Okay. We rely on you to okay. play and to officiate. Okay. God will help all of us. Okay. You understand? Yes, please. You are playing with whom? Arabic people? Yeah. I am Arabic? No. Finish. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, the referee was happy to take $700. How about the other officials? This is Abu Kulibali. Like Dembele, he's also from the Ivory Coast. Hello. 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 Thank you. Hello. Hello. We have to make you feel welcome, okay? So we have something small in our hands that we want to give you so that uh, for seven years. <laughs> At first, he was hesitant till he knew the referee was okay. The three officials pocket seven hundred dollars each. With the seven hundred dollars already paid to the referee, Anasa's layout of the game totaled two thousand eight hundred dollars. The next day, Aduana Stars played ES Setif of Algeria. In the 73rd minute, referee Dennis Dembele awarded the Ghanaians a penalty. That gave Aduana Stars a narrow victory. The Algerian champions were so upset that their official Facebook page claimed the referee had awarded an imaginary penalty. So it was not surprising that on social media, they were complaining. B. Valère Gouhou told the BBC that he didn't wish to discuss the allegations. It was up to his bosses. So far, Anas had paid Premier League refs, some of their bosses and elite refs, who are supposed to make Champions League matches run smoothly. 
Last September, Ghana hosted one of Africa's major football tournaments. WAFU, the West African Football Union competition, brought national teams from 16 countries, promoted with the slick professional high-energy video. On show, top players and top referees, all members of FIFA's senior ranks. Would any of them take money off total strangers? One of the investigators told me that they were playing a special tournament, so I felt that why not? Let me get ready with the team and let's move there and see what we can put on our radar. The tournament was being held at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. The officials were staying at a plush hotel an hour's drive away and security was tight. We went to the main security gate and there were even police officers sitting there. And I said, oh my God, what are they doing here? Our luck was that we knew one of the referees there. And when we said we were meeting a Ghanaian referee, they were comfortable with that. Once inside, they met up with a familiar figure. Charles Dorner, the man they'd last met at a petrol station with a fistful of their cash. Dorner was here as a technical instructor for the tournament. He doubled as a link between us and the referees, so he started calling them in, one after the other. Dorner set about lining up a selection of referees for Anas's team to meet. We told these referees that we just wanted to be their friends. We are from the team Hearts of Oak. Our team would qualify for African National Championship. Then when we meet them, we can ask them to help us. Each referee was asked for a phone number so Anasa's team would have them on call. And then they were offered $500 each. So I'll know you now. Charles Dorna was paid a commission for each introduction. He was very enthusiastic. Yes, he was really enjoying doing it. As the Ghana national team advanced through the Wafu tournament, the reporters also attempted to influence the officials in charge of Ghana's games. Well, he said, we have something here for you for the game. We are for Team, team Ghana. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. So we wish you all the best. Mm. Now, if anything comes our side, I hope you'll be for us. Okay. Some of the referees seemed bewildered by the way this was happening. I think they were surprised that a technical instructor who was leading the referees in the tournament would call them in. But the Gambian official, Ibrima Jallo, indicated that offers were usual. Normally, this thing, the way we do it, it's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. I told you, in the morning. It's not a matter of bribery or mm -hmm. the way I think trying to bribe me or try to bribe me. Yeah. It's not that good. But it's important they are, they are just the, the relationship. Yeah. Something else was happening while Jallo was speaking. There in the background, yet another ref was being lined up, led in by the hand by Charles Dorna. Jallo told the BBC he had never been given money to fix a match. He denied wrongdoing. As the clock ticked down to one of the big matches involving Ghana, the reporters entered the sanctity of the ref's changing room. The man who took them there, Charles Dorna. Dorna urged the reporters to get on with the payments to three of the match officials. One by one, they took the cash on offer. 
Abudu Bello told the BBC the allegations were completely false and nothing like this happened. A brilliant goal gave Ghana a 1-0 win over Mali. Ghana went on to win the tournament. But there was one other winner. Charles Dorna took a total of $2,500 from Anasa's reporters. I was disappointed in these international referees. I was expecting that payments of money to these people was going to be much more dignified. But alas, it was the same, same way of collecting money. Anasa's investigative methods have raised concerns within Ghana that he's inviting people to compromise themselves by waving money at them. As news of the football investigation began to filter out, argument raged about the ethics of what he does. It is wrong to induce somebody by an enticement of some lucrative thing, be it money or whatever, and then turn around to say the person is corrupt. And indeed, for our law, the giver is as guilty as the receiver. So you cannot exonerate the enticer and condemn the, 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 I mean the, the victim. Anas rejects the idea that his methods amount to enticement. There are rules and regulations governing every referee in every match. And the good thing about CAF and FIFA is that they remind all referees of these rules even though they know already. Now you are coming into contact with someone who says he's from Team Ghana and he says he's giving you money. He gave it to you publicly in the sense that he didn't force you to take it. He said this is the money for you and you stretch your arm. Anas and his team had now handed over cash in dubious circumstances to referees across the whole of West Africa. What could possibly be left for him to investigate? The answer lay across the continent in rural Kenya. This is the home of charismatic assistant referee, Arden Ranga Mawa. A role model to many youngsters, Mawa has been preparing to represent his country at the World Cup in Russia. But back in January, Anas's team left Ghana and traveled 2,000 miles to meet him in a glamorous quarter of Casablanca. I sent my investigator to Morocco. They were living in a plush hotel together with all the referees. The team posed as officials of the club Aduana Stars, mingling with international referees at a continental championship. They aimed to find referees willing to help them in the Champions League. Then we got there, all of a sudden, language barriers started, and then people were not willing to talk to us. It took a while for the undercover reporters to find a referee willing to talk to them. Almost all the referees I had approached, Eva tells me that, look, it's not allowed to meet you, or I can't come to your room. I met Mawa in a lift. I said hi, but our conversation was cut short because he had to get out at some point but I really wanted to talk to him. There's this one referee friend I have back in Ghana. I told him I met this referee here. His name is Mawa. Could he help me to talk to him? He said, yeah, no problem. Within 45 minutes, he told me he had spoken to Mawa and he gave me his room number and said I could talk to him. He would come and visit me. I was really surprised because if the junior referees decide to tell me the rules, then he should know better. Yeah. I also believe in making friendship. Yeah. You know, when you know a brother, yeah. 
Referee Mawa is offered $600 and takes it. Mawa didn't even know whose room he had just walked into. He's at the top of his game and he's just put his career in jeopardy. I know that. Uh, no, this is, thank you for the gift, but you know, this is, you this know, is, the, is the, yeah. it's that friendship, getting to know each other. Yeah. Then Mawa tells the reporter how to spot the refs who can and cannot be approached in the Champions League. Okay. You know, being, uh, you know, the guys may not be the uh, majority of them are junior referees, so mm -hmm. they, they want to make a name for themselves. But uh, don't you worry, okay. the guys from Morocco, I cannot promise that I can talk to them. They will listen to you and then they will report to you somewhere else where you don't know. You don't know. Since the revelations in this film, FIFA says Mawa has resigned from the World Cup refereeing team. He denied any wrongdoing. Mawa was a referee from Africa who had everything going on well for him and he would have made a solid impact on the world stage. I feel sad about it, but at the end of the day, I also know that Mawa cannot be in the game of football. Not every match went the way Anas's team asked for. Even so, 110 football officials and their bosses took money from the undercover reporters. Anas says only three people declined, and in all, there were almost 150 separate payments. But one of those payments dwarfs all others. This is the president of the Ghana Football Association, the number two in African football, and one of the elite in FIFA, Kwesi Nyantechi. Kwesi Nyantechi is one of the towering figures of African football and even world football. He's done a lot of um, incredible achievements uh, he's done for Ghana first president to send the nation to the World Cup in three consecutive times. In public, Nyantechi has been very clear about his views on corruption. Corruption is abominable and it's not something that we want to see uh, uh, happening anywhere in our society, including the football. Yet Nyantechi's own career in football has been dogged by allegations of corruption, allegations which have not been proven. Nyantechi first started with a badge of anti-corruption, but then as time went on, there were a barrage of accusations against him. And any time these accusations came, he seemed to shrug it off and would always dare people to prove it. Well, this investigation was quite a big one because it was a lot of planning. It required many people. It took about three months to properly figure out what is the best option of undercover. Anas's team gave Nyantechi first-class travel and a luxury hotel in the Middle East with the promise of meeting a wealthy businessman with royal connections, a businessman who was apparently interested in a sponsorship deal with the Ghana Football Association. It was quickly established in the meetings with Anasa's team that Nyantechi was prepared to take money against FIFA's code of ethics and his own football association's rules. Here he was offered a generous gift. Thank you very much. We were very clear to Kwesi Nyantechi that the money we, gave, we were giving to him was a gift. On this occasion, he took an amount of $65,000 from us. The laws are very clear for both FIFA, the Confederation of African Football, and the Ghana Football Association. You cannot take a gift. 
In several meetings, Nyantechi negotiated a sponsorship deal, an arrangement which on the face of it was worth $15 million for the Ghana FA. First, let me talk about the sponsorship. For the sponsorship, it's very important because it will give you wide publicity from Ghana and beyond. Nyantechi's job is to look after the best interests of the Ghana FA, but the deal he was negotiating potentially gave him a 20% cut. The money would go through an agency he was going to set up. We will form a company okay. to be the agency. Okay. And that company will be responsible for ensuring that the benefits that the GFP will promise are yeah, delivered. Uh -huh. okay. And then we will negotiate with GFP. He will not pay. GFP will pay from the sponsorship amount. Okay. Uh -huh. And the school money. Yeah. We can charge 20%, 25%. Then amongst us, we agree that this person gets this money. Okay, so everybody okay. should be sorted out. Okay. Then there will be peace. Okay. You understand? Okay. Nyantechi was setting himself up as a middleman for the sponsorship deal. It would have enabled him to take a hefty commission. You are not expected, as the president of the association, having a direct relationship with a sponsor to set up a company. The president cannot act as a middleman or as an agent. If the president takes anything away from the sponsorship, it is going directly into his pocket instead of the clubs that are supposed to benefit. The $15 million sponsorship deal between the Middle Eastern businessmen and the GFA would be arranged through a third party, a company suggested by Nyantechi called Namex. Nyantechi wrote out the sponsorship arrangement with Namex in his own handwriting. He later signed on behalf of Namex and as president of the Ghana FA. It was Nyantechi who signed. And that was a big moment for this investigation because clearly he had shown that he was the master brain behind it, controlling everything. The sponsorship millions would not be paid directly to Ghana's Football Association, but channeled instead through Nyantechi's own savings and loan company. It's a shocking, uh, but not shocking to uh, some of us who have been uh, on this tangent for quite a long time especially trying to find out how the association work, how their structures operate, and how they are able to get money through other means and not invest back into the game. Sadiq is being sued by Nyantechi for libel over a previous story alleging wrongdoing at the GFA. For NASA's critics, the elaborate sting on Nyantechi smacks of entrapment. If someone is entrapped with an amount as much as $65,000, plus hotel, and other luxurious incentives, you know, that itself will constitute entrapment. It is much as condemnable as for the person who is also acquiescing to the bribery, you know, to the taking of bribe. If this deal had successfully gone through, it means Nyantechi alone, out of the $15 million, would have made $4.5 million. That is the greed we are talking about. One person alone wanting to amass wealth. And you see, that goes to the core of this whole investigation, that some very few people have just decided to destroy the passion of the nation. The BBC put these allegations to Mr Nyantechi, but has not received a statement. Last night, Anas screened his film for free to thousands of people in an Accra arena. Emotions had run high in the build-up to that event. One MP, belonging to Ghana's ruling party, called for Anas to be hanged just days before. Anas, evidence I have about him, he has to be hanged. I see a hungry Anas. FIFA told the BBC they were investigating the allegations in this film. They said it was a priority for FIFA to protect the integrity of competitions. The Confederation of African Football said they would not tolerate any corruption or violation of their rules. They said they did not recognize the allegations we had made. The Ghana FA declined to give a statement. We tried to contact everyone named in the undercover footage. Apart from the replies in the program, the rest did not respond. 
There is no suggestion FIFA, the Ghana Football Association, WAFU, or the Confederation of African Football had any knowledge its officials took money from ANAS. And no one will ever know whether ANAS's money influenced the outcome of any game where he made payments. But it is up to football's authorities to deal with the fallout and restore public trust in the African game. You need to instill confidence into the I mean, system that people will be able to go into stadium knowing that the referee will be fair. This is something that was needed for a long time. Who has betrayed the game of football in Ghana and beyond? Anas Aremeyao Anas, or those who took his money?